That's the kind we're after right there. It's the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Well, things are popping on Lake Eufaula here on the Chattahoochee River. Border between Alabama and Georgia. It's the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula as we resume 2020 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Competition at the highest level and some of the top competitors of the past 18 months have risen to the top today. As you have to be in the top 10 by the time this day is over, the end of the weigh in, in order to make it to Championship Saturday. Brandon Lester of Tennessee took over the lead about an hour and a quarter, well, about two hours ago, actually. Matt Airy was the man in charge. Matt Airy had fallen down the leaderboard. He is back up again, but we are so happy to have you here. Thanks so much for being here. We got three hours of Bassmaster Live. Mark Zona on the way. Uh, things were pop. They've been popping all the way through this tournament uh, this morning. This is about the time of the day when some of the shallow action gets going. We we don't know if that's happening. Which yet. is usually vice versa from every other oh, tournament we that we've ever covered <laughs> here. But really, what we got to see a lot more of this morning, at least on Lake Eufaula, was a lot better. Just quality all around numbers a little bit down but that is to be expected throughout the tournament the other thing that to me is very bizarre is a lot of the guys that we're covering today they're not catching those crazy numbers granted Clark Wendland's yeah. doing that they are truly just hunting quality and most of them said Ronnie Moore Mike Sukon brought it up they said the afternoon is by far the best bite on Lake Eufaula. Absolutely. Making adjustments as we go hour to hour. Tommy Sanders, Mark Zona, as we said, joining you from the Bassmaster Studios, as, as Z mentioned. Uh, Ronnie Moore, Ron Moore, and the Such, Mike Sukon. Guys, uh, what happened during the break? You stayed here and, and sort of uh, manned the ship for our, our, our break. I'm just I'm excited, Tommy Zona, to uh, to see the guys who are going to move up this afternoon. Some of the bonus coverage guys, the Brandon Cobbs that we got to see during the break, and the Lesters and guys like that will make their charge. And I'm also interested to see some of those shallow guys, the the Welchers and the Whitakers, if they can capitalize or if that window is just closing on the whole tournament. Don't know if Zaldane and Keith Combs were deep or shallow, but they both moved into the top ten. Combs was 18th. Zaldane started there, but he fell out, and now he's back in. We'll be looking into all of that over the course of the next three hours. What a great playing field we have. First time ever in the 15-year history of the Bassmaster Elite Series, a visit to Lake Eufaula, which is actually a legendary place for bass fishing. Absolutely right. 85 miles of playing field from the dam right there, which is really the basin of the lake. A lot deeper water, a lot of our anglers that are fishing deeper, really from that dam up to, call it the railroad bridge that's where a lot okay. of but there have also been a lot of shallow water fish caught there because it's been ignored from the rest of the field as you kind of go up past the town of Eufaula you get into the river system of the Chattahoochee River a lot shallower water there not as many anglers in our top 40 fishing up the river system not as much of a giant current driven uh, body of water as you may, fi may find on the, the Tennessee River lakes those TVA lakes a uh, different sort of feel here on the Chattahoochee. Lake Seminole is further down. Uh, Lake Lanier up on the other side of Atlanta. This is uh, the river that you see, that mountain river that's so beautiful as you drive through Atlanta. That's the, that's the same water here. So we are ready to go. That is, by the way, our hummingbird lay of the lake for you. Scott Canterbury. Exactly right. Big, big miss right before our noontime break. And then this. It was just about a 15 minute struggle. Something rare with Scott Canterbury. With that being said, a couple of big fish in his live well though. Started with a smaller one up uh, in very shallow water on a frog and then he moved deeper and got to work and got some good results. That's the kind we're after right there. Just shortly after that big one, Scott Canterbury puts this one in the boat. In his short time as an Elite Series competitor, he has proved a tough guy, a bulldog for competition. He yeah, loves getting in there. Absolutely relentless. Whether it's shallow water, deep water, he has proven on the Bassmaster Elite Series one of the most versatile anglers that we cover. Scott yeah, we don't, Canterbury, live. We don't have much to update on. It got real slow. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about going and fishing shallow. Uh... I really, like I said, uh, it's been a, there's a bite. He, 
hit it like a brim out in a brush pile. But I was thinking about going shallow, fishing some grass. If I could catch one more good one, I'll make the top 10. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to definitely keep grinding. But I'd like to catch two more beggings. Try to take the lead. It got slow. I don't know. I mean, I see other people. I don't know if they're catching them or not either, so. Well, it's all been a big decision, shallow versus deep for all these anglers all day long. Timing when to hit shallow places, when to hit deeper places is, is the key to it, I guess. Yeah, and that's one of the things that you, we, you hear the word timing and rotation so much here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've had a few anglers start and live shallow, a couple anglers that have just lived out deep. But guys like Matt Airy, look at guys like Scott Canterbury, they've been able to make both work. Let's see, we're uh, as far as six that we're with all day long are positioned on Lake Eufaula. Jake Whitaker is the leader and angler of the year points so far this season, starting today's action. It started today in the tournament, second place. Not much of an update to give. Uh, just I did just miss a big one on a frog. I uh, just missed it. Uh, but, dude, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm living and dying by it, and that's, that's the way I plan to fish this tournament, and I'm okay with however it works out. So We still got time, dude. You can hit a little patch of this stuff and catch two or three real quick, so... Uh, again, not much of an update, but we're still sitting on one, still got a few hours to go, so um, obviously not the day we've wanted to have so far, but we ain't going to give up. We ain't going to give up, so see what we can come up with. Now, Jake is... Uh as he indicated there, has fallen way down out of that second place time. Spot, in which, yes. the spot in which he started, but like, he's also correct in saying uh, one of these frog fishing flurries can set you right in short order. Clark Wendelin, he said he had one marina that he was gonna hit where he lost two big ones midday yesterday. You know, my day's been pretty tough, fishing mainly brush piles, and I'm, I'm kind of in a set of docks right now, and there's brush piles in here too. So I'm basically just still fishing brush. Just caught a keeper, but it was didn't help me any, so um, he got hung up in some brush, and I sat there and seesawed with him for, oh, I didn't think big, so I actually even almost broke him off, but finally he just came free, so. Clark Wendlet, Texas legend, also a well-known hard-nosed competitor for years and years on the national scene. And uh, he's done well by himself today, staying in there in the top 10 limit. A little bit surprising, a little bit surprising, but admit a lot slower today than it was for Clark yesterday. We have not had a look at Chad Pipkins today. Chad Pipkins has been one of our players, especially uh, at the uh -oh. end of the day, uh, day number one, all through day number two. And there's Chad out there fishing today. And Chad, we, we're checking in for our, our regular update there. What's what's going good and what's been difficult for you today? Man, it's, it's been real different. It's been fun, though. I, I haven't caught fish in a lot of places, but I, I, I got on real good this morning, right, right where we're at right now. And they're actually moving water right now. And Garrett and I just got back here to the same spot, and, and we just caught about, I don't know, eight or ten each, but no no helpers. I caught some nice ones this morning, had had one over four, a couple threes. I did lose a giant, probably five, five and a half pounder that I'd like to catch right now. But uh, 
it's been fun. It's just insane how much these fish move. They're like 100 yards from where I caught them on day one. And I happened to go down and see on that hummingbird side scan. And my marshal, I took a picture with my phone because it was flawless. Pitched the worm out there and caught a four pounder. Then we just cracked them. So it's been good. Chad, if you can walk us through what your three days of practice were like compared to time behind the steering wheel looking at your electronics for actual time fishing. That's that's the difference. I put in three days, I put 30 hours on my Suzuki, it's like legit 30 hours. And what, I, what I'd like to do now, seeing how things are shaking out, kind of like, you know, you drive by guys you're like, man, I, I graphed it. Like I was looking at all the right stuff, but these fish are not there unless it's right. Like in it, that right is five to nine in the morning. And then until they pull water at three, it's just dead. And so like you can graph the right place at the wrong time. And now knowing what I know, I should have went and looked for more brush, you know, midday and then got back to the, to the ledges and stuff, you know, that last, you know, four to four to eight. And then you can get away from this drought in the middle of the day, you know. Chad, thank you so much for that uh, sharing with us what's going on in your mind out there. We'll be back to check in on Chad Pipkins for sure. Definitely a player in this tournament biggest player on day number two. Of course, we've had a different leader in each of the two previous days. was Matt Airy with oh, almost yeah. 23 pounds yesterday. It's been a touch slower for him today, but he is hanging in there very well, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Megan. Megan. This, is, this was this morning. Interesting fish catch right here. God, that's my horn. <laughs> Scared me to death. Leaned on my horn, I thought the fish gonna eat me. That's what happened. When I leaned on that horn, I turned my manual pump on, I turned A1 on. Give me a little horn. You want a little horn again? <laughs> that sucker's loud, ain't it? <laughs> All right. That one counts, too. Hey, and this is the time of day that Matt Airy caught some really big ones, day one and day two. In fact, a few of them that he... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Gotta beat one and a half pounds. Not gonna help. Now that's sticking him right there. He's not even gonna help, I'm pretty sure. Matt told us after the day two weigh and Clark Wendell had hooked up. He bit it, but gosh, I was thinking he was going to be big. He just wouldn't. Well, we just caught one on a frog, which is the way some of our big ones have been coming, but it was not a big one, unfortunately. And he was dirt shallow. Well, some of our best catches frog-wise yesterday were in the afternoon, yes. Gary. Kyle Monty gave us some some tremendous uh, It's going to happen again. Oh, yeah. That's, no uh, as you mentioned, Matt Airy, same situation for him yesterday, although we were not with him for those catches, but we will be there today. You can count on that. Matt Airy started in the lead, dropped a, well, a good ways, not out of the top ten, but he is back up right behind, or, well, not right behind, but about three pounds behind our leader, Brandon Lester, Scott Canterbury. A little tough going as before we took our break at midday, trying to right the ship, uh, Jamie Hartman, Caleb Cupall, and all the rest, we'll be back to check in on all of them when we get back on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common?
nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. The DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Power Pole Skeeter Boats Yamaha and by Toyota. Just getting started with our afternoon session. Bassmaster Live, gonna take you all the way to three Eastern time. That's when the weigh-in gets underway, very important weigh-in. We'll talk about what happens there in just a little bit. Right now, let's take a look at our updated leaderboard. This is according to Bass Track, and all these weights are unofficial until such time as we have a weigh-in today. Brandon Lester took over the lead a couple of hours ago and has been on top. There's the deal right there. That's what you got to do today. Get in the top 10 if you want to go on and compete for the championship tomorrow. And Keith Combs has moved up into that top 10. Mark Winlet holding steady in the top 10. Chris Saldane has made a move from 10th place up to 7th. Some major moves in the bottom half of our top 10. And uh, Chris Saldane will check in as well. We fully expect him to land at least one giant bass today. That's just, that's just his M.O. He just doesn't quit until he gets one of them. I'm going to head back on the water right now. We were just with Matt Airy before the break on shallow. Predominantly most of the day he was deeper. <laughs> All the wrong size. Those will not help. Catching fish, getting bites. We're not catching any big ones, but it'll come. There's more bites to be had in here, too. You can tell when you get in the pocket, ain't been beat up by all these professionals then you get you get bites if, if they ain't been in here that one smoked it on the fall Let's see if there's another one in there Not Harry, not kidding about the pressure in places like this, especially this part of Alabama where you fish 365 days a year. Exactly, and really what you end up giving up, guys like Caleb Cuffall or, or a, a Matt Airy, is what you give up is that potential school of two, three, four bites that you can catch out of a brush pile. But listen to Matt Airy, he said, there are some absolute giants shallow. We talked about it during our intermission. He sight fished, he looked at one yesterday that he weighed in over six pounds and said, that wasn't the only giant that I saw shallow. But the thing is, you start to kind of give up the numbers game that we've seen out deep mm -hmm. in this tournament. It's a trade off for sure.
very hypnotic to watch these frogs right. coming across there. You just can't not watch it. Back over to Clark Winlet. And Clark Wendell, it looks like he's fishing just a regular marina style boat dock right there, but that boat dock is littered with brush. A lot of the folks that crappie fish here on Lake Eufaula will set up that brush just so they can crappie fish right off of their docks. And Clark said some of his best brush piles absolutely loaded, loaded with big crappie. Which could be also a source of forage absolutely. for some of these large mouth that are, yeah. Not one more cast after down these reeds here. We got some good water on them. God, I can't believe I messed it up that bad yesterday. Clark talking about the two big ones he lost in this marina. I'm gonna flip these, they're a little bit deeper. You just tune it in. A lot of guys that are fishing shallow in this tournament there's really been three factors that have that have kept fish shallow on this lake, which notoriously that that's the way you could win here in March or April. But really high water, real high water on this lake. We had a full moon last week that just naturally brings fish shallow. And the other side is we actually had videos from some of the locals. Some of the mayfly hatches that we've seen on this lake this week, it's unbelievable the food source that a mayfly hatch brings brings a lot of bluegill shallow bluegill want to be shallow now to spawn and and breed but those factors all combined have made shallow water a big factor in this tournament added to what davy Hyde told us during the month of may actually the water did not warm up but actually lost right it, it, it got cooler during a very unusually cool month of may Matt Airy is actually one of the anglers that said, I have lost so many tournaments here fishing shallow. And he said, when I came back, what did I do? I went right back shallow. Well, that one he caught on the oh. on frog a little bit ago, he said it was absolutely in the dirt. Well, I just got a really frayed place in my life. Tie here. You heard him say he had a frayed place on that line. Bad frayed place. I don't even know how it got there, but it's 10 foot down in my rod. I'm frayed pretty bad now. You know, we're, we're getting a few bites here and there. I, I figured it would be a little bit more of a grind. We got some bites out of brush piles. We've had some bright shallow on a jig and a frog, and we just haven't connected with the right ones yet. And uh, you know, the thing about Eufaula is there's a lot of random, really big ones shallow. There's a lot of big ones deep right now, and there's some big ones in between. And if your timing gets a little off on either or, you uh, you catch two and a half pounders like we have. <laughs> so. You know, we're just we're beating and banging around the bank. I think I'm gonna stay shallow and look for that, look for that one or two really big bites. You know, I might could run brush and catch a couple more three maybe's, but I feel a lot better of about uh, catching one of those six pounders up here. 
Hmm. Matt and all the rest in the top 10, of course, being stalked by the guys who are under the top 10 right now. Three uh, second year, uh, one rookie and two second year anglers who are, who are lurking down there. Shane LeHue, Drew Cook and Garrett Paquette moving up the leaderboard and moved up the leaderboard yesterday was Brandon Cobb, two time winner last season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And there's Brandon. Brandon, can we? Um, it's been slow. I mean, I got a limit, but 12 pounds or so. It's, uh, it's slow, but the mornings have been pretty slow for me. I, mostly just catching place fillers is what I call them. Just trying to get a limit in there. I, uh, starting to run through some of the brush I've been catching them on. It's a little early still. I haven't done much and it's dead slick today. I think the wind helped them bite on it. And, uh, catching a few here and there, but really nothing over three pounds yet. It's uh, found a little school here, catching, getting them to bite every cast for a minute there, and then they shut down. But kind of biding my time. I'm fishing some of the stuff that I've been catching them on, but I just don't feel like it's the right time of day yet. So I'm hoping we get some current moving or wind starts blowing a little bit. They can get up and bite because I can see fish on a lot of it, and they're just not feeding now. There's one. You got that one. He ain't very big, but it don't take much to call when you got two pounders. Not a big one. But he's bigger than one I got in there. Two something, maybe? We'll see what he is. Smallest right now looks like I do have a 111 still. So. So two seven. By skills, that puts me right around thirteen pounds. Um, the first day I caught the heck out of them, but I caught most of those off one place, and to be honest, none of them really helped me. They were all just two two and a half. As far as big fish go, no, I haven't been catching very many. It's kind of a late in the day, one here and there thing, but I've been fortunate the last two days to basically hit one string of brush piles and catch 20 pounds or, you know, close to it, 19 to 20 pounds in just a few piles. So I've kind of quit fishing for them. I made one pass through and caught them and uh, haven't fished much late, late in the day. It's been around lunch to one o'clock when I've been catching them. So it's a, it's been a numbers game out deep on the ledges, but they're small for the most part. Oh. All right, yeah, I'm just throwing a big shaky head. It's like a, it's like a half ounce. And then I got a, it's actually a new worm from Zoom. It's called a mag utel. Not sure if they're out yet. They will be soon a red bug mag you tell this is why i'm throwing on the ledge places and uh just using 15 pound test got a seven four is actually my signature rod i've been working on with arc rods and it's a offshore special rod it's meant for long cast pulling them from deep water got enough tip to not break lighter line and uh just been looking for schools of fish in the morning i've been kind of catching catching my numbers getting getting some confidence going getting my place fillers and then find my time till later in the day to run through my brush. I actually started on some of my better brush this morning. I haven't done that all week and I decided to try it just to see and it surprised me how many other competitors in the top 10 are fishing the same brush. I thought I was the only one fishing it and I guess a lot of those guys have been running early and I barely got on any places I had been fishing. So I'm hoping they'll clear out later because I know some fish will be left because I've been catching them late in the day on them. So we're kind of just buying time, trying to catch a few here and there. I've caught a couple, a four pounder or so off other stuff every day. And I have not done that yet today, but I'm hoping to run into one here in a little while. 
That's your AFCO taste the bait right there. That's a perfect setup. We've talked about the Texas rig worms, those bigger worms, but you know, with a loose Texas rig weight. And we've talked about a jig as well for those brush piles. But with Cobb, he's throwing that stand up shaky head with that, uh, with that U tail worm he was saying. That's a different approach. But he also said that was his ledge bait, a place he's going to drag it more, more so rather than a target specific deal. And Z, we were talking about it with Clark Winlet. One of those places, those brush piles can have other types of forage. They can really attract crappy or a big bluegill or gizzard shad. And this is a shot from Brandon Cobb and his Marshall Neil Paul um, earlier today. And if you look, you can see this fish just got caught by Brandon Cobb, but it already has a giant shad in its throat. So some of these offshore places, the fish look really skinny. That means probably a lot of bait has left those, but it looks like those brush piles we've shown on those hummingbird imaging. When a lot of bait is present, the fish are definitely gonna be feeding, gorging, and you can catch a lot real quick off of one brush pile. So great AFCO taste the bait by Brandon Cobb and a great start to his day three for him. That looks very uncomfortable right there. It really does for <laughs> that poor fish. I, I it thought does. Was. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that's like having one Twinkie, but then already grabbing the no. second one before you're done with the first it's one. It's like having two bone-in ribeyes in your mouth. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Which is okay. okay. Which, yeah, sure. Okay. Everybody's mostly okay with that. And we got a lot more to come today. We're just getting started in our afternoon session and Brandon Lester still hanging on to that a long time. Ride up top the leaderboard by standards here. We'll see how long he can hang on. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mincota. Seems like we just got started, but man, oh man, time is slipping away on these four days of fishing that comprise the DeWalt Elite event on Lake Eufaula. The rest of our afternoon session today will cut it to 10, and tomorrow, well, that's Championship Saturday, and of course, the ESPN2 coverage begins at noon, the final three hours of fishing, taking you all the way into weigh-in time, but you can make a full day of it. Watch coverage starting at 8 a.m on the app on Watch mm -hmm. ESPN. So lots of great options for entertainment. Bass well, there's a little change wise. here, friend. Oh, oh, yes, yes, there has been a swap. One and two have swapped out just while we were gone for a couple of minutes there. Scott Canterbury, 
has obviously been busy. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this one right here. He was a couple of pounds behind, actually more than a couple of pounds behind. So you can kind of guess he's inter intersected with a big one. Told you, be ready. <laughs> He ain't that big. I ain't sure I'm good enough. Nice stay here. A little bit of an upgrade. You follow bass right there. Like you follow. It's on fire. Give me some. He's got Canterbury putting ice in, lowering the temperature for his bass and his live well. claim not so big, I would kind of disagree a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was a big call. At least. Like <laughs> two pound call. He's up to 19 on the day, 60 pounds total. He's had an interesting day, to say the least. Those big misses, what he might have had then. Yeah, and in all honesty, that fish right there, that the second, the first one, could tell that fish would have helped him out. But that second one, the way he's sitting now, judging from what the five that he has in his live well, no, no. would not have made much of a difference. Moss is a two and three quarter pounder. Right. Well, but that's a good one right there for about 12.30 in the afternoon. Yes. That's the kind we're after right there. Gosh, and it's just a, a, a slow, steady day upgrading into one of those monster bags. And if you get past that, that 19 to 20 pound mark, especially on day three of an event. He is in great I'm position sure with that enough. last one right there. You know, we just left Brandon Cobb, and he called again, and he's at the fourth place. 15 and a half on the day, about uh, five pounds behind the leader. And he does not like to fish deep most of the time, Brandon Cobb. He would rather go and catch five up shallow than to do this, so you know it might have been a grind up shallow in practice. So he did that win in two events last year. <laughs> been a slow day so far for Clark Wendick compared to yesterday. I mean, he by far caught the most keepers that we followed on camera moving out of his marina slip area. After days at 22 pounds and 18, him having only 12 and a quarter today, he's got to start to uh, have some worries creeping in. Well, we had this one little set of docks that we had some nice ones on yesterday, and you know, I kind of been just saving it or just waiting for an opportune time to go. We went down there too. It was a good run and got in there, hooked one. It hung in a brush. It took a, <laughs> about a full five minutes to get him unhung, but it wasn't a big one. It was just a two pounder maybe. So caught another one, maybe two more. And just, I mean, just hadn't gotten very many bites really. See some fish down there, and they just don't seem to be biting that great. I'm still fishing brush, fishing a big worm. Worms, what I've just got the most confidence in that I can get one to bite on. So, The 
worms in the brush. We've seen some crank. We've seen a couple of big ones on crankbaits out there. Yeah, and as bizarre as this sounds for folks that don't fish a, a ton at home, a crankbait actually has. I mean, it has six hooks on it, but the weight of the lure, and not only that, it doesn't come through that brush efficiently. A lot of times when you're cranking out here, you want to be really more on a clean bottom uh, and the other side of it. A lot of times when those fish jump, they'll throw that lure. But when you generally hook them on a worm, number one, you can use a lot heavier line. But number two, it's about a 90% probability you're going to get that fish to the boat compared to other lures. Taking up from Clark Winlet. Check back in with Jamie Hartman, our shot to the top of the leaderboard early, early from outside the top six this morning. Jamie, it's been a while since we talked to you. Kind of give us an update on, on what the game plan has been since then. And I'm just running a bunch of brush piles and stuff. Uh, my afternoons have been horrible, except for the first day. I just cannot get anything going after... Uh, sorry, the boat's running by. After the morning bite, uh, my school shuts off, and then I'm trying to uh, scramble. And I figure if I can hit enough brush piles, I'm going to catch a fish here or there, and that ain't the case. I just, I'm struggling bad every day, you know. Like, right after that morning bite, it's, it's just gotten really, really tough. Well, Jamie, we will be watching you, and thank you so much for the for the update right yes, there. Yes, sir. Jamie Hartman, Brandon one of the hottest Cobb. anglers in the four. world. Brandon oh. Cobb's at it again, a, a four-pounder. He's up to third place. <laughs> yes, sir. You're right. Is confirmed. The big, the big fish alerts come out of nowhere. That's right? <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> they are at again. Brandon Cobb in fourth place. <laughs> Matt Airy in third. And Scott Canterbury has now unseated Brandon Lester, taking his spot at the top of the leaderboard. Lots more changes on the way. More big fish catches coming. We just know it. So stay with us. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minkota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. Skeeter. Is it still setting the standard? Let's see. First Bassbo, first U.S. Coast Guard approved Bassbo, first Behold Pack Design, largest owners tournament, great fishing win program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassbo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life.
You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. In Alabama with the Bassmaster Elite Series, had a great classic in Alabama, Lake Gunnersville to start the season here. And we're gonna have a great one in Texas for only the third time. We've been to Texoma, we've been to Lake Conroe, and now we're going to Lake Ray Roberts. And the first time ever to have the Bassmaster Classic host city be Fort Worth, Texas. Great, great sports town, beautiful facility they've got there in the Dickies Arena. It's brand new, state of the art, and just a, a great bunch of folks there. How many classics have you and I covered on ESPN2 from the state of Texas? One? One. One. Conroe. Just Conroe. Yeah, that, wow. that Texoma was back in like 80. 79. 79, right. yeah. 79. Hey, I was going to say, when you one. said Texoma, I'm like, was I at that event? <laughs> I was <laughs> negative. Evidently not. Like, I was you were not, not born. Years you were not old. born. Yeah. You were not born at that time. Brandon Cobb. All day. <laughs> All the way Negative up. third. Okay, Scott Canterbury on top now and Brandon Lester. And there's Brandon Cobb. Yes. Okay, we're going to be tracking him extra special now. From, and Matt Airy is falling back to fourth place. He's a closer, Tom. Well, yeah. <laughs> closer, man. Proven fact, That's absolutely. One of the things, if you notice since our break, those weights starting to compress in your top 10. Somebody we've not been with in quite a while. Who is it? Wisconsin. Z? Caleb Kapal, <laughs> my friend. Because he told me. That's he told how to say it. <laughs> From McWanago. No, Wisconsin, McWanago. 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 Can you tell us about your day? Yeah, it's been a little slower than uh, <clears throat> than what I'd like, but I've gotten probably five or six, uh, you know, keeper bites. I think I called once, so, um, but I don't know what I got, maybe 14, 15 pounds, and uh, buzz bait bite was not what it, you know, seemed to be this morning, and just a grind to get really anything going. I hit one stretch uh, with a jig kind of like this. It had some, uh, you know, a lot of vegetation and stuff like that, but got three really quick ones. I think I got one probably three and a half, another one, you know, three pounds or whatever. And uh, it's just been a grind since then. Uh, I did hit a, a little stretch with the buzz bait a little bit earlier and caught, I think, two, uh, two pretty decent ones doing that. And since then, I'm just, uh, I came back up here. I'm pretty close to the launch. And I'm just flipping these trees, trying to get a big bite. So I got to call up by pounds, not ounces now. So. We'll see what we can do. I don't know. I'm flipping just a uh, half ounce green pumpkin homemade jig that I make myself. And, you know, it's been working the last couple days uh, for those bigger fish. So we'll see what we can do. All right, Caleb Cup. Paul, really uh, generous to stop yep, fishing so completely so entirely for that's us. That's a here. rarity. That is, that is, uh, that's, that's a once in a while that happens, I guess. Talking about Brandon Cobb, let's let's have yes. a let's have a BW trailer hitches on the line We're moment here, with yeah a little bit of a sesh with Brandon Cobb, and uh, Brandon Brandon obviously today is kind of kind of falling together. Is this is this the way you had it planned out, or is it just sort of uh, unfolded that way? No, I mean it's been kind of like every day. It's it's really slow. It's like either I catch numbers or good ones. Yes, first day I caught numbers, and then a few decent ones obviously mixed in. Yesterday I thought I was gonna zero and then uh caught a few good ones and then today's the kind of a little bit of mixture i hadn't i didn't hardly catch anything all morning just some little bitty ones and then finally got on two little schools and i've caught up decent now i mean i'm somewhere 18 18 19 range and uh this place here actually when i was typed in earlier i caught like five in a row and they were all two two and a quarter pounders and i decided to come check it one more time and i just caught uh, almost four, a four and a half, and a three and a half. So it's kind of one of those things you kind of got to keep jumping around and fishing places where there is fish and hoping they get to be the right size. And they quit biting now, but they were biting pretty much every cast there for a little bit. I culled up from 14 pounds to 18 in 10 minutes. Brandon, we've covered a lot of series, uh, years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. What did it mean to your career? You have fished professionally for a long time. What did it mean for your career, though, to win two Bassmaster tournaments in 2019? Hold on, stand by one minute. It's baby. Baby, baby. Um, so, yeah, winning two last year, man, I've kind of, like you said, I've been doing it a while. I'm, I'm younger, I guess, but I'm not by any means a rookie anymore. And uh, I've always kind of 
made my career at being consistent, like uh, just never, never doing poorly, just kind of fishing the middle of the pack. And to be honest, it was, I had a good career, but it was, um, it takes a little while to, to kind of, it's, it's hard to get the publicity and the coverage when you're a middle of the pack, upper middle even, type angle. So it really made a, hold on, um, it made a real big difference to, uh, to get to that win that really kind of put me on the map to me. Well, Brandon, we're watching some highlights from those two great tournaments, Lake Hartwell and, of course, Lake Fork right now. And, and especially in Texas, I mean, were you expecting to do that well at Lake Fork as you did? Um, <laughs> this is fantastic. This is, this, really, there's so much going I've on. I had never been there before, and I didn't um, – no, that's not a three-pounder. I didn't uh, – it, it, when I got there, I, it looked like what I'm used to fishing, and then I kind of ran into – I called it the kind of fake heron's foam, and uh, it was just like the heron's foam I'm used to fishing on Lake Hartwell. So I felt real comfortable when I – after practicing a few days, but when I first put the boat in, I saw all those trees and everything. I was like, man, where am I? I don't know what to do here, and then it kind of played out all right. Brandon, you're obviously very busy right now right. at this moment, so just we're going to swat we're, away. We're, we're going to give you a break, <laughs> but we'll just we'll just sit back and watch for a minute, let you concentrate. Although you don't seem to need to concentrate, you've got it going on. Uh, you just pretty much jerk on one every cast here. Sometimes they're two pounders, sometimes they're three. I'm not into the point. In case I need them tomorrow, I don't want to jerk on too many of them. Exactly. BFA. Uh oh. Big Let's... fish alert. Okay. <laughs> Drew Cook tw was 20th place to start the morning. 5 12. He's up to 18. 514. He put uh, it in. You said He's up that, to fifth though, place. With such rich intensity. <laughs> Yeah, you really did menacingly almost. Oh wow! Yeah, I honestly think that uh, <laughs> also it's worth noting. I think Brandon Cobb is so tuned up for this event. His hand-eye coordination is very good. You can see with the hook sets and talking from his Call of Duty playing. I've been playing Call of Duty with him. You know, it's been it's oh, been God. fantastic. Oh, he does boy. play a lot. He does. He play does play a lot. lot. I don't know if I remember him or not. <laughs> um, I know, I know. We've got a couple fish in the box out of brush piles for sure. Uh, we got one frog fish in there. Maybe one or two jig fish in there. So, uh, you know, it's definitely been a conglomerate today. Drop shot fish, uh, jig fish, frog fish, anywhere from, caught some fish anywhere from zero foot to, or I say zero, one foot to out to about 15 foot. So, we've definitely been mixing it up. Just trying to, we caught, you know, maybe 10 keepers on the day. Still haven't got a big bite. I mean, we haven't even got a four pound bite today. So, been a little frustrating. Um, and I know this stuff's been beat hard, but I mean, I don't know about this. You know, I'm running some new stuff now that looks good to me, and hopefully it looks good to the fish too. But I'm in desperate need of a big bite. I got a couple two, we got a two and a quarter and a two and a half pounder in there. And man, that's big, big coals with four or five pounders, you know. That was a genius irrigation. Mixing it up between a frog and a jig Cleaner. right now, because is that what that was? Some of these fish, the they won't come up on that awful. frog, and you can flip that jig in there behind them and catch them. But <laughs> that frog's a good way to catch a great big one too. I keep picking it up, hoping that the next cast might be a six pounder. So he needs it, Jamie Hartman. We've had a six pounder him. each day, and that was that's been obviously a big difference maker. Couple other new folks back in our top ten. And Chad Hipkins climbed back in, and then Keith Combs topped him and Chris Aldane in eighth place. Wow, it's moving. We made that comment before we went to our midday intermission. There's suit. one in here. He ought to be in this grass patch right here. Just as big, thick, and pretty as you could find. Got good water on it. One of the things we've learned on Bassmaster Live the last probably six years is, boy, when a lake shuts down, we talked about it yesterday, it Everywhere. shuts down. But when it starts firing, and this is really the time of the day, yesterday, where it, it almost...
to the minute where it started up again all the way to weigh in with Dave Mercer. All right. We dialed with Brandon Cobb literally back, six uh, minutes ago, and he's caught eight fish, <laughs> including our conversation. It's just, uh, we've got to turn that off. <laughs> Oh, that is pretty. That is pretty. Taking a look at roommates right there. Matt Airy with a spectacular 2019. Scott Canterbury was the man to beat all season, winning the Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. I think Airy finished 10th last year in AOI. He did. Great season. Got a couple different groupings of roommates with Benton and Cook doing well. You've got Canterbury and Airy doing well. Cobb and LaHue doing well. Monty and Whitaker doing well. You and me, Ronnie. Oh. Oh, yeah. Peaks and valleys, guys. Peaks and valleys. <laughs> But hey, you know, talking about up. that, we don't, we really don't talk about that enough. Uh, uh, you know, almost all of these guys room together, and but but there, th for it to work, for it to work, there has to be a trust situation that you're getting valid, truthful information with each other. Now, those two guys, Canterbury and Erie, have fished together on professional circuits for many, many years. But there's also many roommates where it does not work, where Every now and then, it's a one-sided situation. We've seen that happen throughout I mean, the years. That's a big tree. I don't understand it. It all kind of fish me. The Canterbury Airy combo, at least the Canterbury side of it, actually both sides of it, working out very, very well. During the course of this event, today it's got Canterbury. The big one's in the boat. Got that five-pounder. Mm. It's all important. That was his third fish of the day, very early, 7.48. And he has otherwise spread them out pretty good. I he mean, we had one mid-morning. He about, is a grinder. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Never quit. Never gives up. I mean, you never see this guy resting five, at all. Five of the six biggest fish caught today were all 7 to 8 o'clock. The only is one that recently right? is Cook just did it. Yep. Boy, that wow. It's a sweet stat. That's a window of opportunity right there for sure. Scott Canterbury over the 60-pound mark. One day of fishing left after this. So, uh, might hit 80 pounds during the course of this tournament. Brandon Lester, Brandon Cobb. Brandon and Brandon followed by Hartman, Eric Cook, Cuffall, Combs back in the top 10, Zaldane as well. This is it. We'll be back on legendary Lake Eufaula right after this break on Bassmaster. Bassmaster. Thank you. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family.
Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Sabre FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. I have to take a minute and give props to our fabulous host city, oh. Eufaula, Alabama, which for all these low these many years, basically since the start of Lake Eufaula, has been home of electronics pioneer Hummingbird. Wow. Some of the history of all these incredible, incredible aids that have been developed for anglers, bass anglers in particular. Involvement of the legendary Tom Mann and many, many others at the start all the way until today. I just make bass fishing a, 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 an evolving and ever more interesting sport for the participants. Make it easy for a lot more of the participants They've as given well. given us a lot of content this week <laughs> to use. <laughs> yes. It's nice having them that close to bring us that content. Tip of the hat. Hats off, Absolutely. in fact, to the, that great company, Humminbird, which is synonymous with Eufaula, Alabama. It, Dating myself a little bit, I had some of those first units right there. Did you really? Absolutely. Uh, my old, get ready, Monarch McFast. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. The McFast. That's right, the Ron. McFast. That's right, Ron. All right. I don't even know. That sounds like a butterfly to me. Exactly right. <laughs> Taking a look at our Humminbird Lay of the Lake right here. You follow so much history with the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. And this is a big, big playing field. Not that the whole playing field has played this week about 85 miles long from the dam there at the bottom of your screen, all the way up past the town of Eufaula, up into the Chattahoochee River. And really, this has been interesting. A lot of anglers thought the shallow water was gonna play up in the river system, and it has a little bit, but most of the, really the shallow water fish that at least we've seen on camera have been around that main lake, just inside of where so many of our anglers have fished offshore. This the word, if you had to have just the, even the Take tiniest off. bit of, of current, you would head for that upper river part of the lake there, but uh, they have turned the current on now. They just made a dying big in the back. Our leader, Scott Canterbury. You know, I mean, I just got a, I seen enough shallow yesterday, potential. This, play, this pocket here, I ain't been in in a long time. There's usually a big brim bed. A couple years ago, there was a big brim bed back here on the right, and we had about a four pounder in it that year, so I just ran in here. Just, just looking shallow, history stuff. Not going to do too much of it. Keep them honest. It's got caught a real Looks good like one. I can't have some brush out there. Real good one about 30 minutes ago. Just under four pounds. Talking to a lot of the really good local anglers that predominantly, if the high water situation would not have hit, tournament would you know, have been dominated offshore. I got, I got offshore. a pretty good bag. Uh, if I could catch one, one more good one, I'd have a really good bag. Like, I mean, I'm happy, don't get me wrong, but I sure would like to go ahead and bust 20, 24, 23, 24. If I, I think I got like over 19, but I got a, two and a half pounder in the box. If I catch a five, you know, give me a really big bag. And I think some of those bigger fish this week, or I know some of those really big ones have been coming super dirt shallow. Uh, there's just, 
There's still a bunch of them real shallow. The water came up, had a mayfly hatch this week, brim bedding. I mean, there's just a lot of fish up shallow. It's a, you're not gonna catch a whole, well, I mean, you could catch a bunch of fish, but you're not gonna catch a whole bunch of big ones shallow, but you're gonna get a chance. If you committed to it, you're gonna get a chance at a big one or two, I believe. I mean, I just know too many people that's been fishing shallow. Well, our leader, Scott Canterbury, is uh, had a fantastic day, of course, 19 pounds. That's that's terrific. And oh, he broke. But it's not off. without a little bit of drama here and there sprinkled in. I exactly right. Lost that real last big one. And then this one right here. But we're saying that one right there might have helped, might not have helped that yeah, much. Yeah, marginal. But he has some really big ones in his live well. Speaking of really big ones, uh -oh. classic champ Hank Cherry, who has a six-pounder already, a five-pounder. is up to 19 on the day, 15th place. That's the kind we're after right there. B -F -A. Trying to get in our top ten. He needs another uh, call of a uh, two-pounder. And really listen to the Canterbury right there, up there fishing shallow. This was his last good one that we came to right when we came out of commercial Thanks break, a midday break. Keeping those shallow ones honest, the reason he's doing that, no doubt, hands down, is his roommate has made hay yeah. shallow, and he oh. knows what's going on up there, too. But, man, that's so hard to do with I everything that's in your live well, predominantly, except one early this morning, has uh, come fishing brush I didn't piles. look for any brim beds or nothing during practice. I just, the shallow bites impressed me as much as the lake has, as far as being huge weights all week. I mean, this shallow bite's been phenomenal. Guys catching 23, 22, by staying shallow. I mean, I never would have dreamed it, but I've seen it happen. When a lake is just fishing really good, like healthy, this lake is really healthy. It's got so many, the population of fish is really good. You can catch them doing so many different things. And then when you got the weather that we had, you know, the, if we would have had this weather a week before, probably the shallow bite wouldn't have been as good. We had a tropical storm, low, low pressure come in, and they crushed them shallow. And a lot of those fish are gonna stay up there as long as there's food. Uh, it was windy and overcast for four or five days, rainy. I mean, I know some guys that was catching them really good during practice and that didn't catch them that good, but, you know, they may have caught too many during practice. Scott Canterbury, last year's Angler of the Year. If things don't change a whole lot, he'll be the Angler of the Year leader at the end of the day today. The only thing missing from his resume is a, another spot. Is a win over this dominant last 15 months. There. Keeper, maybe. The Clark Winlet. Gonna that be close. One, that one might help. Spotted bass. Pretty amazing. I hadn't caught one that was any good. And really from this time on yesterday, a lot of what Clark brought to the way and at least two really good ones were caught from now until the end of our fishing time. Look at that! Oh my gosh, look at that prehistoric. Mm -mm. How big was the largest alligator ever ah. taken? In Lake Eufaula, ah, September 13 hunting season. 13 feet one, 13, 10, 14, one, or 14, 10. Man, oh man, starting that to get is out of our realm of actually bass He's like, trivia. He has someone set, in his right? sights right now, I'm afraid, right now. Let's, uh, let's cut away. We'll be back with the answer on Bassmaster Live. Uh, the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota.
trail gets rough and the mud gets deep, you'll find a Toyota Tacoma. It's the best-selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Lake Eufaula, on the border between Georgia and Alabama, is uh, where we come back and bring up the uh, issue we brought up right before we went on break there. How big was the largest alligator? We're way down south here. The largest alligator ever taken in Lake Eufaula. Z, was it 13, 13, 10, 14, or 14? I'm going to say it was the one that we saw from the drone footage. Uh, yeah. That yeah. one wasn't taken yet. That one Steve hasn't been taken. I will go with D. All right. Ron? I was going to go with D as well. All right. So, Such nosy. I'll go with C. I'll say it's 14 feet, 1.75 inches. Biggest lizard ever taken wow. here. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Wow. I know wow. my alligators. Last yeah. year, <laughs> a, a, a father and daughter took it out. She said it was so big, she was younger, teen daughter, and said, we're going to have to build a house around it. Don't. I'm going to mount the whole thing. Don't I mean, feed alligators. Winston Churchill. That is literally from the baseline to the free throw line on a basketball it is. court. Yes. That's a, oh Winston Churchill said, never feed an alligator. The only thing you, that benefits you there is you, you'll eat you last. Yeah. So... There you Kips, go. The mayor said they have a great alligator population there. They don't really, you don't bother them, they won't bother you. They did have one incident, though. An Auburn student at night was capturing baby ones, and it gave the little call to mama, bit him on the hand, yep. didn't hurt him, but uh, scared the living daylights out of him. Okay, and let's how about the mercury move of the day? Sweet alligator info from Mike Sukon right there. No <laughs> doubt about it. Really, Brandon Cobb was struggling up till we had the phoner with him. Yeah. Literally, our BMW hitches on the line call, and he was making slight upgrades. And right after that, kind of hitting the mother load and hitting them about, as you said, Tommy Sanders, every single cast for a half hour. Part of it while having a phone conversation, a fully coherent phone conversation with us. It was quite, a, quite an impressive move, and of course it is, as you say. It's the same thing Brandon Lester did earlier in the day. He finally found that roadbed, found the spot on the spot that was good, and went every cast for 30 minutes. Exactly right. And you can call the Mercury move of the day. We've talked about it all week long. Timing, guys rotating these spots, continuously coming back, waiting for the sun to get high, and get these fish to set up on these key offshore structures. That right there is the result of that. Brandon Cobbier, the Mercury move of the day. Kind of nominations for, for another move of the day. Drew Cook, after that 514 he caught a uh, half hour ago, he's got a five pounder. He's our second one over 20 pounds. He's in third place. Now accepting wow. nominations, okay? <laughs> Try that again. I like it. <laughs> Y'all need to be nice. <laughs> it is day three. Yeah. Final three hours tomorrow on yes. ESPN2 are going to be a time. A T I M E, no doubt about it. Back out to Matt Airy, Bassmaster. Live.
Oh, I did not see Drew Cook coming today. No. 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 Did not. He must have found a big pot of him on bed. He's, He's trying to get out. Crazy to him. consistent, but if you're just picking up with us on this beautiful Friday afternoon, this is the third day of competition. Tomorrow's the championship. The rules we've been playing by, and will be for all four days. It's uh, well full field on days one and two. We had that after that was done. After day number two weigh in, we cut it down to 40. Those are out there today. Those 40 anglers trying to make it. To the 10 anglers who will fish on day number four. It's a little over eight hours of fishing a day for each of these anglers. It's all equal and a five fish limit. Your best five that you catch during the course of the day is what you bring to that weigh in. The heaviest four day total weight, aggregate weight. It's going to be your champion, your $100,000 winner, the coveted blue trophy, which is very, very hard to come by. Despite the fact that two in our top 10 have won twice in the last year. Did you think it would? That this tournament would scare 80 pounds, four pound average. You did. I, I, I put did 88. Too. I thought 88. 88. Like 88. I figured somebody yeah. have 25 and they might have 18 and then two, you know, 20 pound. I had about 21 something. a day. Yep. Yep. 84. Well, it has surprised. It has surprised a lot of the locals, not from the leaderboard standpoint, but really depth the, of yeah the depth really the depth of 18 pound stringers and up. Boy, that's we the, hit, oh, five pounder. That's the one hard thing with this right now is you can't let up. Right. You can't let up right. because you'll yep. lose too much ground. Yep. And so some guys are having to do that strategy because, hey, you could have a big lead going in the final day or you could lay off and be down. So that's the strategy involved. you got to make it, and it's tight. There's like seven guys right outside the 10 cut within two pounds of making it and hey, getting in there tomorrow. Two bites all day. That's not good. Catching up with Kyle Welcher. I was counting on seven or eight. Caught a good one right before we went to break. Thought maybe he was going to get something going. It only takes one or two of the right ones. One guy we're trying to get an update on, Seth Fighter. Down in 33rd. He has three fish for six pounds or so, but he stopped pinging at six o'clock this morning. So he was one who had a big bag yesterday, jumped up into 17th place, one of the biggest movers. We had talked about that with Rappel of Fantasy Fishing, one of the biggest movers from day two to make it to day three. And he wasn't too far from the top 10 to be able to make it. So if he comes in and comes across and pings with a solid bag, he'll be putting his name in contention. I was less than a pound and a half out of 10 yesterday. Buddy Gross, who was picked a lot, just moved into 11th place. I was one of those people. He's the highest percentage guy that you pick. I picked 17%. That's he wasn't the highest in that bucket, but that's still a high percentage to pick someone. No big fish, just a solid three to fours. Well, we just uh, designated our Mercury move of the day. Pin that on Brandon Cobb. Made that f f furious, furious flurry. Part of which we were talking to him on and on the spot as usual is Davey Height. And Davey's very familiar with Brandon Cobb and his game. A couple of guys from the Palmetto State of South Carolina. Tell us a little bit about Brandon and, and what you can pick up from the signals he's given you today. Well, first of all, about Brandon, he's a, he's a great young man and uh, obviously a great fisherman and I, I heard the Skype that our, our friend Neil was giving us there with Brandon talking and uh, it's just a lot of people around the Carolinas knew who Brandon Cobb was but last year a lot of people throughout the country and, and even in other countries we have viewers uh, learned how good a fisherman Brandon Cobb is and to go places you know to go to Hartwell and win yeah that's his favorite lake that's his home lake but to win at Toledo Bend uh, excuse me at Fork well, that was certainly impressive, certainly impressive. So I just caught the tail end of his flurry, I guess about midway, but this is why I've got the camera this way. There is not a bass boat. That direction is where Brandon Cobb caught a lot of his fish, left them biting, and he's right in front of me now. There is not a bass boat fishing within that three mile stretch. Not a single one. And we talked a little bit this morning about pressure. I saw people fishing brush piles. Uh, 
hadn't seen like like on day one and, and most of the day day two clark winlet fishing brush piles it didn't seem like people were fishing those same areas but these fishermen are really good their electronics are really great and they're going to figure it out as the days progress and, and there's just a lot of pressure down in the southeast corner of this lake or the southeast fourth of the lake i'm going to say there's a lot of pressure down there obviously a lot of good fish caught we, we saw some of that earlier today when, when i was with brandon lester but here's what can play especially with tomorrow being saturday there will be tournament boats out here there'll be recreational fishermen out here the the lead anglers will be fishing the same stuff for brandon cobb to have places my three four mile stretches that basically no one's fishing i've seen seth fighter in this area a little bit but that could be huge for brandon cobb it could be absolutely huge the first day bill Olin had the lead not many people fishing on the bank there were a few others we saw him catch them but more and more of these anglers have had their friends tell them they figured out they've watched the water levels rise and they've gone to the bank so there's a lot more fishermen fishing the bank today than there was but areas like this big stretches uh brandon cobb left the area where y'all saw him catching all those fish ran about two miles stopped on another little hump that i'm familiar with tops out about six feet it's got four or five brush piles around it he caught some there he is really dialed in with his timing and we we saw timing how that's a big big player here the place where i saw brandon lester just wreck them this morning. Keith Combs had fished there. I'd seen other people fishing there yesterday. Uh, Brandon Lester has fished there every day. Timing is everything, but yep. timing and not having other people pressure the areas that you're fishing. Uh, great observation. Thank you, Davey. We watch, as we watch Matt Airy land another, the potential keeper right here. I think he's going to take a look at the situation. Definitely bigger than 2.6. Put some weight on. Davey Height with a good report on Brandon and, and, and a, a good insight into what may be going through his mind the way he's a uh, Plotting his moves this afternoon. Yeah. Two nine. If y'all want to relax, I'll get with you. But until you relax, I'm not going to get with you. We talk about, nominated as another <laughs> big time mover today is Drew Cook. And he has put on a big time move today and we have not had a chance to talk to Drew during the course of this day. Drew, kind of give us a, an assessment of what's been going right today. Every, everything seems to be falling into place right now. Well, you know, this morning I, uh, I, I made a decision on something that I thought would pan out if I was going to, you know, make the cut and make it in top 10, put myself in position to win. Um, and it, it didn't go out like that. I found a big old school. Um, I spent the 20 minutes in between the first flight and the second flight that had to wait today idling. Um, kind of odd, you know, to blast off and then not go fishing. But, um, you know, I found a school, caught some fish off of it. Um, I actually lost this good one, so nothing was going my way earlier and um here in the last few minutes it's been it's been working out for me though drew if you can kind of dial us in what what has worked out the last few minutes you know uh, i think that there's um little bite windows in this in this brush that if you know or you think you have a brush pile that somebody hasn't already hit three times today Right now is the time to go hit it because they're biting. And the two piles that I just fished, I hadn't seen anybody on um, all week, um, but I caught decent fish off of it before. Um, so I made a decision. I was actually fixing to run all the way back up to takeoff and uh, caught the first, you know, almost six pounder. And then right after that, I caught a Oh my. Caught a, uh, another five pounder, so it's um, it's going. It's been kind of odd though. Um, a lot of the a lot of the fish were, will bite it just like that and miss it, um, which I think. I mean, I don't blame them. You know, they've seen fifty of these different colored worms come through their their house in the past few days. But um. I don't know. We're going to keep swinging. I think I'm one bite away from, you know, 
getting into the top ten and getting fish tomorrow. Hey, Drew, we, we know that, that you, actually you and your father, we, we spent time doing a, a Zona Live last mm -hmm. year with you. You have a wild eye for fashion. Where does one pick up a, a brim like that? Like, where do, we, where, 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 where do we get that to pop? This is the AFCO shade tree. Um, they're shade anywhere. So my ears and uh, my, my nose and everything has been getting fried. I had to... Off. Sun protection, so very important. Smart stuff there. It, it was, Smart stuff from Drew Cook. It was like the Academy Awards music right there. It was. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> portable shade, take it with you. What could be better than we're that? We're done. We're out. Genius <laughs> stuff. Genius stuff for sure from Drew Cook. Uh, very important. We are in the period of the year, the, the three weeks with the most direct sunlight. The most UV Is available right? right now. We just entered that three-week period, so it's very important. Sun protection, absolutely. Think I'm about. I'm going to work on that as much as you can. And sunshine. <laughs> Scott Canterbury hanging on to the lead right there. The only man over 60 pounds unofficially, according to Bass Track. But we'll see who can get up above that mark when we come back. The Dewalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassmo, first US Coast Guard approved Bassmo, first Behold Pad Design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassmo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So, yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another 500 bucks if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. Back on you fall alive, a note about Sunday. Sunday, our next 30 for 30 film, Long Gone Summer takes an unprecedented inside look at Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa's record-breaking home run chase in 1998 with exclusive interviews from both. They helped bring baseball back after the 1994 strike, but it came at a price. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN and also the ESPN app. Now we're getting closer and closer. The minutes are ticking by, 3 o'clock. Begins the weigh-in, a very crucial weigh-in. It's not that far away. Uh -huh. Only 10 anglers. At the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Eufaula. We'll be passing on until tomorrow. That's the final championship day. 
coverage here starts at noon on ESPN. His second bass map. Have it on the app in the morning. A little bit of a different look and weigh, weigh in, as you might imagine. But handling it with the greatest of ease, of course, no one had any doubt all along. Is our esteemed colleague, there he is right there, the master of ceremonies for all big time Bassmaster events, the one and only Dave Mercer. Hi, Dave, we miss seeing you so far. I know you've been busy, you've been adapting, doing different things, and uh, the weigh-ins are looking good despite the, the different sort of format you have to follow. They've, they've really been easy to follow and, and very entertaining. Well, you know what, guys? I mean, I haven't been busy the last few days. I don't know if you heard, but Bass Live is on ESPN2, so I've been focused on that pretty much. But let me tell you, things have changed a little bit, as you guys have seen. We're no different than all the uh, different businesses in the world, really, all the different stores. If you want to be open and you want to get back to business, you're going to have to do things different post-COVID. And we've obviously uh, started to do that. You see social distancing measures everywhere. You see signs all through the venue. But if you look backstage here, guys, number one, you see a lot of us wearing masks and you'll see us pulling the mask up and pulling the mask down. And the reason for that is um, just simply when we're within six feet of each other, working together, we make sure that that mask is up. A lot of times in the stage, I'm off to the side and you, you know, I can put it down because I'm nowhere near another angler. But here's the process they go through here, guys. And uh, they come back here. Normally you see them jammed through here. And now they don't do that. They each get their own tub, basically. So we keep our anglers separate. So the most amount of anglers we can have back here at a time is 10. So they stay each through here. All the bags, the weigh-in bags, are sterilized in between each angler. And basically what we've done is removed as many hands as possible, as many exchanges as possible. I mean, you've heard the same story all across the country, all around the world, but I'll take you up here on this stage, give you an idea of what it's like for our Elite Series pros. So they make their way through the baskets and they make their way right back up here. This is your backstage area and they make a run across here and then they come out to the main stage and you'll see it's very different. They get their own mic now. I'm on the exact opposite side of the stage and we have Trip Weldon working in the center of the stage. You'll see Trip, he probably hardly ever takes his mask off just simply because he's always within six feet of somebody, whether it's handing the fish off to the anglers or, or, or it's interacting with me. But if you look here, this tub, what happens is the anglers are actually doing a little more work. They'll weigh their fish, hold their fish up, then Trip will put the fish back here in a bag and hang it on this hook. So the anglers are actually taking that bag off the stage themselves, making their way down the stage. We bring them to our live release system and it's just a way of us doing this event and getting back to business. And you know, we're all trying to do it. And, and it's amazing the amount of, uh, of support just gone into this and the amount of planning and uh, i want to thank our anglers honestly for bearing with us and it's been a little weird and wacky but uh we're all getting used to things changing and being different well dave that's great i want to jump forward i want to, don't want to put the you, you know cart before the horse but let's look forward to the next stop of three three for back to back to back in the state of new york i think the pressure is really going to be because in three weeks you get to kind of make or break your season in many cases for a lot of these anglers there. That's a ton of pressure right there, isn't it? Uh, an incredible amount of pressure, and that's going to be a lot of fun to watch because whenever we have back-to-backs, you see it wear on the anglers, whether it's just physically, mentally, the pressure is definitely on them. And you want to talk about some pressure, you look at some of our northern guys, some of those guys that you know had hot starts last year, they're gonna go up there with their backs against the wall. There's so many stories going on here. And, you know, we were kind of joking on the dock this morning and we were saying, this might be the worst year ever to be a rookie. Cause you know, you always want to just get your face seen as a rookie. Well, we had our first event, you know, at the beginning of the year, three months we hold out. So there's no momentum. Then you go back and you're weighing in with your face covered every time. So there is a realistic expectation that our rookie of the year this year could go to ICAST and nobody will recognize him without a face mask. 
Well, Dave, thanks so much. Well, well put there. And thanks, uh, thanks from all of us for, uh, to all of you for keeping everybody safe, the anglers, the crew, everyone. They're all important parts, and we all want them to be uh, in good health and, and remain that way. So Dave Mercer will be conducting the I, weigh-in at 3 o'clock. They've really pulled the weigh-in. Oh, that it's is great. Where it's working like, good. How are they going to do that? And they've pulled the weigh-in off flawlessly. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, and they are adapting. To for, the point where, you know, I, I enjoy separation. I wondered, would, would they continue doing that through i mean it works I'd, really I'd well write up an official request and send that <laughs> send that baby in there looking in on buddy gross right now first look at buddy i'll do one of the of best offshore anglers on the bass mass no but one of the best offshore anglers pretty much on in the planet the yes. yes lake chigamaga fisherman we're going to see that body of water later this season at, a, at, a, at an odd time of year, mm -hmm. going there in October. 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 Yes. But a time of year where they do get caught there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Got an update from Andy Crawford, one of the photographers uh -oh. out on the water. He was with Shane LeHue, and Shane LeHue caught 10 fish in a row. And then he announced, I can't count. And the reason he can't count, he went back to his live well, saw that he had six fish in the live well, Penalty. made a cast. So. Uh, with that, that's a two-pound penalty at the weigh-in. For those who don't know, obvi obviously every keeper to be a keeper has to be 14 inches. We keep five of them in the live well. You catch a sixth one. If it's bigger than one of your five, you release one of them, and you always have five in your live well while you're fishing. He had six, which means now that he self-reported it, it's a two-pound penalty, whereas if he would have just tried to skirt the rules, he'd be DQ'd completely. So. LeHue was uh, on the on the edge of the top ten, and that's probably going to really hurt his shot of yes. making the top ten. Two pounds a serious penalty. I mean, it I admit, is. just about everywhere. It's, it's probably about hurt, fifteen hurt. or twenty spots. You know, fifteen spots mm -hmm. probably. It's it's hurt a good day pounds. going too at yeah. seventeen pounds. It's going to hurt folks that he was on their fantasy team. When he on yours? I no 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 <laughs> oh. no. I don't have anybody that made the cut. <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, uh, best wishes, well wishes. Mark Menendez, yep. one of the veterans on the Bassmaster Elite Series, battling some uh, back issues. Hopefully, we'll have him back here in the next three or four weeks. But we know that that, that definitely hurt some folks' fantasy teams that have tuned you up a little bit, Ron Moore. It looks like uh, Mr. Whitaker has made an adjustment. It looks like he's throwing a crankbait or it's something. Not good. So he's not, not throwing the frog right this right. moment. Maybe it might be a brief spot, but trying to put it back together. All right, Whitaker needing to make a big move today. Yes, uh, completely back up that uh, shout out to Mark Menendez. 250 yes. tournaments with the wow. Bassmaster. You talk about a stalwart. It's our guy, man. And a great guy, and an absolutely great guy. Scott Canterbury still on top. He will be on top of that uh, AOI leaderboard as well if, as if he maintains that spot through the remainder of today. Brandon Lester, Hartman, Drew Cook. Big move. We just saw Drew, and he's doing very well. Who else is doing well? We'll visit some more with some other anglers. We come back on Bassmaster. Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.
That's what the Bash University is all about. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait. Fish bite and won't let go. Watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mincota. Tomorrow, big night for sure. Have another UFC fight night from the Apex in Las Vegas. Number one ranked flyweight Jessica I taking on Cynthia Calillo, who moves up to 125 pounds in our main event. Main card starting at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. The prelims at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Looking forward to that. I'm holding your feet to the fire, my friend. Give me something. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Jessica, I, I mean, you know. No, I'm that's a, not where I'm at. No, oh, okay. I'm, sorry. At, I'm at Cynthia Cavillo. Okay. Uh, that right. is exactly <laughs> where I am. Look who's second I'm still, now. I'm still working uh, we'll, on it. We'll, I'm still working we'll, on it. We've got some business right get, here. We've got a lot going on, but let's talk about the leader right now, Scott Canterbury, and we have to say it. Thus far, it's been a series of highs and lows, but the power pole replay of the day, it was not this. Oh, he broke and come off. Ah, you could tell that was a dead gum Alabama stud. Scott Canterbury, though, five good ones in his live well. Giant earlier this morning, and he backed it up with all solid three and a half to four pound bites. I mean, it's a good one for Scott Canterbury. Just slow and steady. It's not like there was a flurry. It's not That's like there was just a one hour right session where he caught him. It's been all day long. Scott Canterbury, you are the power pole replay of the day. Said he's going to do everything within his power to bump it on up to 23, 24 pounds before this day is over. And that's I, I that's what he, he did, wants now. He wants a win now. He wants he a win. I think he would have been there with that one yeah, bike he, yeah. that he did. That, that big uh, fence post he sort of broke it off on. That was a, obviously a thing of uh, some substance. You know, I feel pretty good. Uh, I still need to call one more. And it's getting late to stay in. I mean, I sure would like to. I got, I mean, I got a decent bag, but if I could get rid of that one little one, man, I, I could really stay in the hunt. It's, uh, I got an hour to fish, then I got to get back. I haven't got them to hit a crankbait since day one, and I've thrown every kind I can think of. Colors. That's some good brush. I don't know. It's been slow. I mean, I've got some good ones, but it's been slow after the early 
bite. It got slow for me. Five pounder at 740 this morning. Four, four pounder at nine. Almost four at 12:30. Not too long ago. I know Such wants to scream it, don't you? You do. Scream what? Two significant five pounders just came across the board. Those. Clark those? Hooked up. Buddy Gross in our top ten at eight. The five pounder, 18 and a half today. Caleb Cuffall with uh, second place. All the same size for Clark. Yes. Is that a nice one? All right. I think that'll cool that spot in the ass. But he's only a pound out of getting in our top ten. Spotted bass is bigger. That's a good call though. <clears throat> Maybe a three pounder. Come on, one five pounder. All right, two five. <laughs> oh man, every I'm just thinking too small. Every huh? year, my girls, my wife, and two daughters make me a sign. They actually made me quite a few last year, and uh, this was the first one they made when the season started. And usually, the first one they give me when my season starts is the one that gets to ride in the boat all year. And if I'm having a bad day, which no day on the water is really a bad day, but I can always look at that sign and make it the most important things in life, other than fishing. <clears throat> Reese, Ren, and Emily. Emily's the boss. Reese thinks she's the boss. And Ren will soon be the boss in that order. <laughs> I'm a follower. I'm the caboose. I am the caboose. That little one, I don't know what I'm going to do with her when she gets older. Yeah, that'd be a good way. That'd be a light way of putting it. Spunky. Interesting watching Caleb Cuffall. <coughs> He's fishing a lot of vegetation yeah, that's a lot off today. different than so anybody that watch. we've watched. More How matted, so? yeah. A lot of more, a lot more matted, and he's really just concentrating on that edge. They're asking me, what are you focusing on here? What, what are you trying to do right here? Well, basically, I mean, this is a, a pocket right off of the main, uh, the main river, and it's just got a ton of a ton of things going for it. It's got, you know, I'm seeing a ton of bluegills swimming up and down these uh, these grass lines. It's got a ton of different different kind of weeds and stuff, and um, they can get way back under here. And but what I'm doing, I'm just picking apart the edges. Basically, um, that's pretty much where I've been catching them. Uh, in practice, I did a, a lot of flipping, like a you know a heavy heavy weight, you know, getting back in there. But I just wasn't getting the bites that I was with the jig, you know, just fishing the the edges. 
and uh, I, don't know, I just saw like a five pounder swimming back there in, in the, up in the shallow water and I think these fish are just moving in and out, moving in and out and just looking for a meal every now and again. And hopefully my jig will find one of them. But generally I'm just flipping the edges though and, and they're hitting it like, you know, either on the fall or, you know, within one or two strokes of the jig. So, you know, just putting it in there, giving it one or two pops and then move on to the next, uh, the next flip. Because if they were there, they would have hit it by then. There's no sense in working it back, you know, to the boat. Not much of a breeze at all. Mm -hmm. Expected to have a little bit more wind tomorrow. That may uh, may affect the fishing. Might, might help certain situations. Here's your TH Marine forecast for tomorrow. High just under 90 degrees. Winds at 5 to 10. Partly sunny. I would say, say today is mostly sunny. During less humidity, real comfortable, comfortable weather. Big mixture of vegetation there that we have not seen really in this whole tournament. We saw one big one from Chris Aldane punching a mat, and it was a very small mat, but a lot of the anglers that have been focused on that shoreline grass so far in this tournament, not stuff that has looked like this at all. The cuff hole, Matt Airy. Big the rest of them. God, that's my horn. Scared me to death. Honk if you love bass fishing. Leaned on my horn, I thought fish were gonna eat me. You want a little horn again? That sucker's loud, ain't it? That's today, Caleb Cuffall just knocked out a five pounder not too long ago. Take his place behind Scott Canterbury. Right when you think that it is over, you're not gonna see many more big ones. I mean, it has just been a parade throughout the day. You're just Look at that. Yeah, you're just never done out here on this place. It just never shuts down for very long. Take a peek at that top 10 right there. Ooh. Unofficially for tomorrow so far. Boy, wow. That would be strong. It will be strong. I, I can tell you what, it's going to be a battle royal tomorrow. 10 anglers shooting for the $100,000 first prize. The very valuable win on the Bassmaster Elite Series at our second stop of the year, the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite. We'll be right back with more. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. While I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series, I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. AFCO, any fish, any water. If you love bass fishing, <laughs> then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Groundbreaking designs. 
unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. All of that pent-up demand for top-level competitive bass fishing being satisfied here in a big way on Lake Eufaula. What a great place. Boy, the pressure, though, will be on. We're going to catch up on the schedule here with back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Three events that will be very, very important to each and every one of the anglers in the Bassmaster Elite Series and just one right after the other. Cayuga Lake there in the Finger Lakes region, St. Lawrence River, smallmouth mm -hmm. capital of the world for, for our purposes, and Lake Champlain. Fabulous Lake Champlain. We have some Canadian anglers that have a lot of work to do that we were looking oh, at yeah. as potential angler of the year contenders that are going to be scratching for the Bassmaster Classic should they not show up in New York. And if you have not performed up to your potential in the first two stops of this year, the pressure is on mm -hmm. you when we hit that, that three-week stretch right there. It will all happen very, very quickly. There's our uh, leaderboard right now, unofficial, according to Bass Track. Scott Canterbury, defending Angler of the Year champion, set to be uh, the leader in AOI points at the end of the day today, unless something completely unexpected happens. Man, oh man, he has put on a top-notch, top-tier angler performance today. You know what? And he really started the day with a little bit, a uh, little bit of info. You know, sharing just kind of what's going on in the lake with his roommate Matt Airy. Started with a topwater popping frog, caught a decent one, about a three and a half pounder, but then went to his primary game, fishing isolated brush piles, just like Clark Wendell, guys that are just non-stop brush piles one after another after another a law of averages is what we really called it fish as many as you can in one day to score with bass just like that and today not a lot of bites not a lot of bites for scott canterbury you've, you've even heard him talk about it boy i haven't caught him real well but he's got the right ones in the live well and ron moore real quick Screen of knowledge. I wanted to break down Scott Canterbury and what he's kind of done. We talked about do you stay close to takeoff? How do you run? Do you go all the way to the dam and work your way back? Do you just work your way down the lake? I'm going to kind of take you on a, on a path of what Canterbury has done this morning. From Lake Point State Park where we take off at the top of Lake Eufaula before it turns into the river, you come down, go past those railroad bridges, and he caught his first one, like you said, popping frog early this morning. And then we keep going down the lake. That was at 6.05 this morning. Then he made a stop and caught that five pounder, caught a, almost a three pounder right there around 7.30, 7.45-ish. Kept moving down the lake, got to the Petaula uh, Creek region, caught a couple more there, caught a four pounder at nine o'clock. And then, then he's made his way all the way down towards the dam, caught a three and three quarters right there around 12.30. And so if you zoom out the map, you can see he has covered all of Lake Eufaula today, and he's going to have to work his way back on and, and stop at brush piles, or he's going to have to just run straight from the dam up to the takeoff when he checks in. But Canterbury has definitely kept every option open for all the way from takeoff up here, all the way to the dam and back. We told us about uh, 15 minutes ago that he had uh, he had an hour to fish, so he's got to get all that work that you talked about on the way back done in the, in the space of 45 minutes, uh, three quarters of an hour. And Z, you said it takes 25, 30 minutes probably to get down to the more southern region of part of uh, Eufaula or so. Such is absolutely chomping at the bit. Big hurt alert. Shane LeHue <laughs> caught a six and a half pounder. He's right on the cusp of making the top 10, but he's going to have that penalty already self-reported. Wow. He's got 21 pounds today hit by some of our guys, but I wanted to <coughs> slide in here and hit a couple of these docks on this little flat in this corner. Not sure what that was, but we're going to turn around and throw back in there. Right the line through. sure started moving off like it was a bite. <clears throat> Depending on the size, that could be the Phoenix Boat's big bass. Six and a half pounder there could and be see a seven pounder. Uh... 
Maybe if it was a bite, it wasn't a big one. But. Your big fish alerts today have a lot of panache. So they do. Sure like to find out. I'm excited. It's a very enthralling tournament. Mm. Yes, bite. I don't think he'll help. Hey, Mike. It was right here. Yep. Oh, my line right broke. Here. How about that? It was right. That might be a three pounder. Maybe. Maybe not. It was a bite. I think he's a little bigger than one of the ones we got in there. Broke my line when I, oh yeah. Broke my line when I slung it in. Be nice if it's a three. I don't know if it'll go three or not. Two fifteen. Definitely helps some. Now I gotta figure out which one to call. It's not that one. On his bass track, he's got a two and a quarter and a two and a half. Let's see this one. Or that one. Ronnie, we're took, like, taking a look right now at two of the biggest names in I fantasy know that's fishing. A team you are one. You are the fantasy fishing guru here for. Bassmaster, Bassmaster Elite Series. I notice, Tommy notices this, Matthew Barry, with all of his knowledge that he provides us with, he will get tuned up by the fans when he makes a bad call, a weekly call. Does this? Do you get lit up by Bassmaster fantasy fishing fans? It's a, a lot of trash talk for sure. I actually created a group. It kind of feels like Matthew Barry. I created a fantasy fishing group. Name it. Name named it. Beat Ronnie Moore. And wow. uh, the, quite a few people are beating me, but there are, we almost have a thousand people in the group. I'm like 150th or something in the group. So I do get tuned up each week, but it's fun because I can't win anything even if I do well because I work for the company. Your, your style is to not let any, any sort of bad talk head in your way go unanswered. Oh, I mean, for you sure. Are, no, you are, I, you are, I you are not going to let anything yes. pass. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and make fun of their shoes, make fun of their profile picture, whatever I have to do. They're just for asking sure. for it if they wade into it with yes, you, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. No. That's, that's still, still the policy. That's just I checking. have no idea, Z, what that had to do with Scott Canterbury and Matt Airy, but that was a good segue. <laughs> that's how I teed it up. That's what we do here. Airy back into third. Canterbury was owned by 13.8% well, of the folks. Five ounce upgrade. That's a, uh, I do need to get under your bag, sorry. And only 2% for Erie. 2% for Erie. He's also in that top bucket. Okay. Bucket A okay. is yeah. the best performance so of the year, many. so there are so many good guys Got in that it. bucket. Welcher's only a 4% in that bucket. Polinick was in there, Cruz was in there, Buddy Gross was in there. Stetson Blaylock. I will give a self-reflection time at the screen of knowledge later to show you how my team did since we are now officially past the cut. Okay. And so it'll be, you guys can tee off on me there. I'll let you, uh, yeah. it, no, it was not a me teeing off <laughs> question. He's inviting it though. Come it, on. It, but it's a, it's a hard, it's a, it's a lose-lose situation on, to be in. Serious things. It's free to play, and there's like fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff that's given out throughout the time. And if you're a Bassmaster member, it's a 
another $500 for free if you do well. So, yeah, it's one of those throw your hands up in the air and make it happen. Hey, Rappel has given uh, prize packages down to 20, 20 places, so that's, that's incredible. Just checking in real quick. That's your leader right there, Scott Canterbury, defending Angler of the Year champion for last year. Will be the points leader after today in all likelihood. It's been a rough day for Jake Whitaker, who was leading Angler of the Year. Yeah. You no, know, Ronnie is really close with him. But you had a, from talking with Jake after the weigh-in yesterday, you kind of had a vibe. I said, would you feel like your your areas that you're fishing will reload? And he laughed. He's like, absolutely not. I've throttled them for the past 48 hours. But with that being said, he said he was pleasantly surprised on how he did thus far in this event. He 100%. He would have put his bank account yes. out there and said, I had 17 pounds right. yesterday. When they weighed 20, he was like, right. whoa, I did not. I underestimated what they were. What they were. Fantastic year so far for that young man. And we wish you uh, we hope he can get something turned around in the remaining uh, 40 minutes or so, 50 minutes of fishing time. Ooh. And there's the cut line right there. You know, you've got to be in the top 10 if you're going to go on and fish tomorrow for the big trophy. Keith Combs just inside. Shane LeHue, boy, that's a tough case right there. Just out. We'll be back to check in more fishing when we return. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and resetter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Less than an hour's fishing line, uh, fishing time left on Eufaula, but we got plenty of time to prepare for the 2021 Bassmaster Classic. It's been announced. It's gonna be on Lake Ray Roberts on the Trinity River there, just north and east of Fort Worth, Texas. That will be your host city. What a great place. They have a brand new facility called the Dickies Arena. It is going to be fabulous. Very, very Easy to get to part of town. I've been all over that part of town, and it is, uh, it's just a, a joy to go and visit that place. Fort Worth will be fabulous. The people are very friendly there, and we're going to crown a new world champion for 2021. And we land there March 19th, 20th, and 21st. Hope you can get there, too. And they got a lot of great restaurants, too. If you want a great steak or the best Mexican what? food, oh, my really? gosh. Oh, not my favorite Mexican restaurant in the world, Fort Worth. Scott Canterbury. Been over 60 pounds for a good long while now, three hours or how, so. How many will we have at the end of today over 60? 
I go four. I'm going to go four. We may have more than one now. You never know. These Man, are unofficial right. numbers. Unofficial numbers till we weigh them all in. Kyle Monty's back in. Buddy Gross in the top ten now. Four sounds good with me. Yeah. Yep. I don't think uh, Hartman will have it. He's the only other person at 58. Well, Drew Cook snuck into that top ten. Absolutely. Very good move on his part. One of those contenders was our Rookie of the Year for last year, contender for Angler of the Year, most of the season. Got some info from our Eyes on the Water. Davey Height said, boy, the, they are pulling a lot of water now, a lot of current in the lake, and really every day this last hour has been so critical for bigger ones, bigger ones that we've actually had on camera. Davey Height said the water's probably more current right now than he has seen all week. And he said it wasn't supposed to pull until right. after they start checking in which could also drop that water for these shallow guys. Yeah, that's going to have an effect on the shallow bite. Though. Now it's going to take much longer for it to affect Kufal's place because he's so close to takeoff at the north end of the lake mm -hmm. where the river flows in. What's the name of that dam down there, Such? The, you knew Walter it. Walter F. George? Walter F. George Dam, exactly. Walter it was one, one of the biggest lift, tallest lifts in the world on that dam. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. That was a trivia question I had teed up. <laughs> so I sort of messed that up, didn't I? No, because you didn't give the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's That's horrible. teed up over there. One article said highest east of the Mississippi, but Wilson Dam is 93 yes. feet. Yes. Intimidating. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. It really it's, is. It, yeah, it's, you feel it fear is. when you get up to the Wilson Dam. Wow, there's a battle for that 10th and final spot for championship Saturday. Keith Combs caught a three and a half pounders up to 18 on the day. And Chris Aldane just landed one where he's mm. within striking range. He needs to call a two and a quarter. How many pounds between first and tenth, Such? Fifth. Five pounds. Five pounds. Five pounds. So how about a Brandon Lester that's caught 40 to 50 on day one, 30 to 40 on day two, has caught nine that are on bash track. We obviously saw him catch four or five that weren't going to help, so they didn't even put him in. But only nine. Drew Cook with 24 caught today. So he did end up, that graphing he talked about paid off. It's going to be a free-for-all tomorrow, isn't it? Yes. And the key thing is, is like they always say, the big bass of the tournament, if you're within that, you could have a shot to win. Every single person in the top ten is within six pounds. Well, yeah. It is a 7-5 big fish. You know, and really it's going to be predominantly nine offshore fishermen and one shallow water guy being Caleb Cuffall that – you know, we've seen Matt Airy, he's definitely survived shallow. Little bit of deep water fishing. Uh, but, but really, the rest of our field has been offshore. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, Go ahead, Scott Canterbury's pretty much on, on cruise control, not pushing his brush piles, trying to get maybe one more big bite shallow hard for an angler to admit that he has a good bag and he said that about an hour ago so he's just been doing the pocket and the main main drag flipping deal one thing with we're watching Kyle Welcher in the bottom left he's had a pretty tough day a limit for yes. 10 pounds and he's still only four pounds out of four or five pounds out of the top 10 so a simple 15 pound bag and Welcher can still make it and he's hooked fourth, up right now go. perfect time fourth to 17.
Nice ride. Kyle Welcher is our Rookie of the Year points leader to start this day. Had a great start to his, lead, his year down in Florida, St. John's River. Now we ain't moving. <laughs> Not for another cast at least. Wendland a pound and a half out of the cut line, below the cut line right now. So, Surprisingly tough day. Yeah, yeah, really, really big contrast to the first two days. I thought he was fairly unstoppable from what we got to witness yesterday and, and just from listening last night that he had not hit one third of the brush piles that, mm. that he had marked. Welcher winning two today with an 18 point lead for rookie of the year on Buddy Gross, who's wiped that out as of now. Buddy started where? Buddy was in 19th. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's eight he now. Is, yeah. I know that because. Fantasy. Fantasy sufficient, obviously. Taking a look at Lee Livesey. He's had a really solid tournament. He's been up and down and back and forth. He was seventh after day one, dropped to 28th yesterday, moved up early this morning, and then dropped back down to 20th. It's been the ebbs and flow when his bite window has opened up. For he sure. had a rough time getting here. He guides on Lake Fork. He hit a deer, got it fixed. Thousand yards from where he hit the deer, right after he got his truck fixed, he hit another one. You're kidding me. No, he posted on. Are you kidding? No. Like leaving the day of fishing, he hit two deer within a whatever <laughs> a week or that's whatever what it was. Call, that's what within we call, a thousand yards of each. That's what we call accident. sucks. That's what we call yeah, that's a like BDA, a lot. big deer. Get it all cleaned up, ready to drive here and be all pretty and shiny. <laughs> it's horrible. What are you saying? So wait, he he. Well, hold Come on, on man. Hold on a minute. Hold on. <laughs> so he hit a deer. Got it fixed. Got it fixed. Got the then damage hit repaired. another deer right where he hit the other one? A thousand yards. Within a thousand yards of the other one, yeah. Well, he's got a 30, 40 so minute bad. drive away from the lake every night that he's guiding. Last so. case. Wow. That's just bad luck right there. Yeah. No, you, know, you hear things like Randy Sullivan had a cracked windshield and two flat tires on the way here. So hmm. it's been rough getting here. It's that been is. a long trek. I mentioned Welcher looked like a Carolina rig. We hadn't really seen that. Only Texas rig, jig, maybe a, a, an oversized shaky head, but Carolina rig is a killer this month and next month during the time of the year, but hadn't really seen anybody. I guess that's more cumbersome and brush, but it's great for shell and ledges. Mm.
one of the major highways that goes over Lake Ufala right there. Seen quite a few fish cut, caught through those blow throughs. Let's go through here. Uh oh. Gosh! Mm. I don't never lose them on this thing. That one just pulled off. Dang it. Felt like that's heavy fish. Heavy fish. Could have just been an old two and three quarter pounder like we've been catching all day, but it felt good. We're not gonna go through just yet. Mm. They're in the mouth of this thing schooling, I believe. Huh. Can't tell if that's bass or what that is. Talked about the triumphs and travails recently of Lee Livesey, Texas angler, Lake Fort based. And uh, last year, boy, he gave us a moment that we will never forget. I doubt he'll forget it either. This is about the most circus catch landing of a fish that you will ever see in your entire life. Just sit back and enjoy this one right here from Lee Livesey. St. John's River. The rule is you, you can't have more than 50% of your body out of the boat where basically if the boat was moved and you're leaning on it, you'll fall in. So he had to stay in the boat and figure out how to reach this fish legally. Oh. I remember on, when we Lee. covered this, one of the most cooperative fish yeah. we have ever seen. Kind of just went on there for him. Went on break for him there. Just, that's a good one. That's that's awesome. awesome. Yes! Yes! Legal, I used my own rod to get my line. The hook fell out of her mouth. My dad was actually following yes. in the camera boat with Andy Crawford, who took photos of that whole sequence. Over the dock, back under the dock. Certainly memorable. Did that yes. end up being our number one fish catch of the year? Right? No, no. Oh, you no. got to give that to I mean, the 38 pound day that Brandon Cobb had. Okay. Yeah. 11 pounder. Yes. Unbelievable.
Scott Canterbury still hanging on to that lead right there. He's been sitting there for a good long while. Brandon Lester held it for a while. He's down in fourth place, and the cut is all important today. Tenth place, sir. Lower than that, you're going home. Keith Combs sits there right now, and Chris Saldane, the guy outside. Boy, it's getting exciting. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Breaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassbo, first US Coast Guard approved Bassbo, first Beehole Pad Design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassbo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So, yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Some of our anglers already on their way back to the launch in order to get ready for weigh-in. Some of them have as much as 30 minutes left to fish at this point right now, all in preparation, all leading to tomorrow. Championship Saturday, only 10 anglers from today. The top 10 will pass through. Have that coverage here on ESPN2 beginning at noon. The final three hours of fishing taking you all the way up to weigh-in time. You can make a, a day of it, though. Get the app. The app coverage starts oh, that's full coverage at 8 a.m. So you can make a whole day of it. Scott Canterbury, the guy in the lead right now. And boy, he is, uh, he's looking super strong right now. But look how close the next five spots are. They're all within about, well, eight ounces. That is that is strong. We never see it that close ever. And we've seen some tight ones. No, it's going to be a great championship Saturday. And the other great thing about that is you're going to see some granted. Caleb Cuphall, he is one of the anglers that has started and lived shallow, but you're really going to take a look at some of the best deep water anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series going for this trophy. Well, it's going to be, as we say, a free-for-all. Just about anyone's going to have a shot, depending on the circumstances, you know. But right now, we need to talk about fantasy fishing. The most important component of fantasy fishing is knowledge. So we go to Ron Moore and the screen of knowledge. Huh, that's the way it works. It is the yeah. way it works. I wanted to just wrap a bow up on uh, day three, wrap up Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and kind of what we're expecting. I told you I was going to do a little reflection on my team and, and Luckily, Buddy Gross has shown out today. My most picked uh, angler of my five anglers. He's jumped into the top 10. But overall, four of the five guys I picked made uh, the top 40 cut. Luke Palmer just outside in 49th. So 
Uh, four guys fishing today, that's always important in your team. Buddy Gross, if one of those fishes tomorrow, that's gonna be just plenty of bonus points there as well. We're gonna jump over to the two best teams. Ooh. Now, it's not just, oh, you're gonna set up the, you're gonna pick the five best anglers and that's how you get the team. Here's two different arrangements of anglers and they get the same result point-wise. Scott Canterbury, Drew Benton, Bill Lowe, and Seth Fighter, and Chris Zaldane. This exact team picked by two, ang or two uh, participants and then this variation of a team, Matt Airy, Keith Combs, Brandon Cobb, Seth Fighter, and Chris Zaldane, that arrangement of anglers equals the same point total, 1,324, and that is the top points for today. So it's very interesting to see how that'll be, uh, how that'll factor. Airy got bonus points for being the leader. Canterbury on this other team will get those same exact points if he leads after today. So a lot of point fluctuation, but plenty of prizes to be given away to any of these good teams in fantasy fishing. Well, kudos to you, Ronnie, for sifting through all of those entries, the thousands and thousands of them and finding the two top the teams two. right there. Hey, I, right. It's, you just got to click that sort button the correct way, uh, otherwise you pick the worst team. So it's, it, was, <laughs> it was really hard. Good stuff. <laughs> Ron Moore, master of fantasy, master of knowledge. I'm back in here where we started this morning, and I hate rerunning shallow water that I've already fished, but I know there's one or two really big ones that have been hanging around this a little grass patch in here. There's been some bluegill around it. And that's what we need right now is a really big one. I saw a six pounder in here yesterday and lost a three pounder in here yesterday. The six pounder wouldn't bite. I had thrown all over top of its head until, didn't know it until I got up there and I saw her just swim, just ease out of the patch of grass. Just like them old biggins do. Stubborn. Definitely been a slower afternoon than days one and two. And all around what, what's been interesting get about there to that patch of grass before we run out of time. Today has around. been just a lot less keeper bites but there's been a lot more quality today. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers way down. I should. Numbers say. are way I, down. We no just doubt. we just see a sampling, but yes. I, I would say that they're. But we're seeing a sampling of the guys that were cracking them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's the, this time of day is when I've been catching my big ones, and man, it's been tough this evening. Uh, I don't know if I got behind people or what's happened, really. I went shallow again. I flipped docks, threw a frog, done a little bit of everything, and I haven't upgraded. Uh, Fish and brush again right now. It's been tough. But we got a pretty good bag. We're going in with them. No bite. That's the first time oh, I fished that all week without getting a bite. That's a good one. Yes. That helps. That caught me off guard. That caught me off guard. That's we needed we needed that bad. I don't know which one I got the call. I believe it's in there. You know, you know, we talked about it. That, yeah. That's not one of the bigger bass that we've seen today, but that's an enormous bass for your day two leader, yep. Matt Airy, especially in a tournament that you know tomorrow, hands down, this tournament's not going to come down to a winner by pounds. This will come down to a winner by ounces by the yes. end of this event. So tight. I, I can't remember when it's been so that close. Helps. That caught at the me bottom off guard. To the top 10. 
everyone will have a shot to win. Absolutely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Two through five, two through six. <laughs> when you look at it, it's it's unbelievable. It's eight ounce separation. Mm. He's going to gain a little bit right there. Scott Canterbury will lose a little bit to the rest of the field, at least from Aaron. Drew Cook got a lot. I got a, I got a feeling about Drew Cook tomorrow as well, and a couple of other guys. And pick your own favorites because it's going to be a big day tomorrow. Got a little bit of fishing left though, so don't go away. The Dewalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mencota. For 30 film, Long Gone Summer takes an unprecedented inside look at Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa's record-breaking home run chase in 1998 with exclusive interviews from both. They helped bring baseball back after the 94 strike, but it came at a price. That comes up at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Question about that summer. Do you remember the home run derby from that summer? I, I did not see the home run derby. It was, that, uh, was prodigious. unbelievable yeah. Yeah, yeah. what happened. It, it was like the rest of the season. Um, it was asked, the odds of what was happening were so astronomical, but it was an incredible home run derby from that summer. Yes. I just happened to this week watch an old, ancient replay of the in, uh, the PGA Skills Competition, and they had let Mark McGuire compete in Long drive. The he was he was incredibly talented at all the aspects really? of it, but he just crushed the long in a way that you just cannot imagine. Right. You know, perfectly coordinated. Last care. Smooth swing. There's Clark Winlet. Boy, he needs something. To oh, something to happen now. Oh, that's a good one. A little too little, a little too late, I'm afraid. Good it's fish. about a pound and a quarter out of the uh, top ten. Mm -hmm.
grass and just saw her swim. If that fish would bite right now, it sure would change our whole day quick. It's a good call be for a three Clark. Three pound call and put yes. us right back where we need to be. I'm gonna pick the frog up and throw it over at one time on the way out, just to see if we can get lucky. She just, I'm, I'm sure that's the same fish I lost the first day because she was right there in that grass patch. And I mean, it's, it's a big, big, big fish. I've weighed in two sixes and she's every bit as big as that, if not bigger. Funny thing is she's still in that same patch. She's educated. I threw a drop shot in there yesterday on her and just threw it out in the middle of the grass and just sat there and shook it for about five minutes like I was fishing for a bedding fish. Thinking, well, she'll get, she'll get upset enough here in a minute to where she'll just swim over there and eat it. Marine Weather Watch. Uh, well, you've seen it if you've been with us for any amount of time today. Just a perfect Chamber of Commerce type day, as they say. Sunny, 88, not too humid. Hardly any wind at all. We're supposed to see a little pickup in the wind. That might actually help the fishing tomorrow. Five to ten miles an hour predicted for tomorrow. Coming out of the north, which really is what we had days one and two of yeah. this tournament. Yeah. I don't know how to make a bite. Probably be a little bit cool. She was there this morning when we started here too. In there swimming around, laughing at us. Hey, there's something swimming right there. Hmm. These fish have just seen a lot of pressure and a lot of baits, but <laughs> I hooked a five and, and probably the one we just saw the first day and lost them both in here. Funny thing is, is that great big one still sitting in the same spot. I can't believe it that she is. How well, well she He ain't big enough to matter. Un unfortunately, he might call though. No, he ain't gonna call. Hey, no, this is Ryan's. Oh, yeah. I've been fishing a lot of his then because they all look just like this one. These little drains are the best. Not right this second, but I guarantee you I can pull up there and see it. Guaranteed. I'm gonna look. You said one of the closest Bassmaster Elite Series tournaments we've had in a long time going into Championship Saturday. Weights have really kind of condensed together here in the last few hours for our top 10. You have to make the top 10 to be in our championship. Disturb her house for a minute and see, see if I see her take off from somewhere. 
like a specific spot or something. I don't see her now. All right, let's roll. Well, big time let's drama roll. for four or five guys who are outside the cut right now. And I still think that's 12 gonna, ounces. It's going to be higher than 55, 55 nine to, to get into our, I do. It's a pound and a half higher? Yeah. Well, we yeah. were saying, we said 56. Yeah, I think Tommy said. said. I'd say 56 and a half. 57. There's your top 10 as it stands right now. Keith Combs just barely hanging on right in there. Look how close those weights are. Tomorrow is just going to be you know, off the charts. It's just going to be so much tension tomorrow. Anything can happen. Chris Saldane, Shane Leahy, Clark Winlet, Drew Benton, Chad Pipkins. All of these guys have spent a lot of time in the top 10, and now they find themselves out. Boy, time to get something done. We'll be back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Sign up to compete in the inaugural Hook Bassmaster BASS Nation Kayak Series, powered by Tourney X, presented by Abu Garcia in 2020. The trail features five regular season events, with a championship to be held in conjunction with the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. The first tournament will be at Logan Martin Lake in Hell City, Alabama on March 5th, in conjunction with the 50th Bassmaster Classic. To find out more details and to register, visit Bassmaster.com slash kayak. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Sabre FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. If you want to know how the best anglers always seem to find fish, stay on fish, and be in the right place at the right time, don't ask them. Just look at the name on the side of their boat. The one that's built 10 million motors, shallow water anchors, and more. No angler's going to tell you their secrets, but they don't have to, because you already know. Minn Kota, Fish for more. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. Final moments of the fishing for today, and it's all about tomorrow. The 10 best from the day. We'll be here tomorrow on Lake Eufaula fishing for the championship. Our coverage right here on ESPN starts at 12 noon. There's also morning coverage available to you on the app so you can make a full day of it if you desire. It's going to be some good stuff. Obviously, it's going to be some tight, tight, tight competition. Mm, man, oh man, no one is safe. No one is in a position, at least right now, to run away and hide from the rest of the field. It is going to be uh, anybody's ball game. Clark Wendelin jumping back into our top ten. That was a better call than, than yes. he thought it was. Two. Two calls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh I, we didn't see. Okay. Mm, I think it's safe to say. 
I know Such has had different nominations all day long, but you know what yeah. time it is, friend. Keep popping that's off. right. That's right. They keep popping off here and there. <laughs> oh, he broke, hey, come big on. one. And we don't like showing that, but it is part of the game. It is. Big one right there for Scott Canterbury. A big miss. And then this big catch earlier today. And, and it's it's unbelievable. Scott Canterbury talking about how tough of a day it has been. But really, everything he has set the hook on, except for about two or three, have been good quality bass here from Lake Eufaula. That's we're after right there. And it's fair to say Scott Canterbury is going to have probably one of the top five bags of the day, fair to say? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Scott Canterbury, strong day, only one key lost fish. We saw two, but one that we know was a big one. Scott Canterbury, you are the Power Pole replay of the day. I don't know if this has ever happened. I'm sure it has. Yes. Roommates, one and two on top of the leaderboard after three days of competition. But there it is right there. One pound currently, according to Bass Track, behind Scott Canterbury is his roommate, Matt Airy. And really, you know, Matt Airy, not that he's had a bad day in any way, shape, or he will obviously still be in contention for the win. But just that big quality bite. I mean, you saw him hold up two giants at the weigh-in yesterday with Dave Mercer when he said, I think there's a lot more coming to my shallow water areas. It just never panned out. A lot of those shallow water areas that he caught those huge fish on day number two, we never saw him get a bite today. Harry, I'm trying to run down his roommate tomorrow. Scott Do they Canterbury. talk tonight? Might run him down today. <laughs> Do they talk tonight? Do they talk Absolutely. tonight? One oh, pound yeah. apart from each other. Do they make a deal to split? They'll just combine first and second money? No, no, no they, they won't do that. Like the Johnson brothers? Like the Johnson brothers? Caleb. In third place, Such, an MRA, yes. a major rookie alert. Oh, oh right. Gosh. Caleb Cuffall. There, I knew it. We're having all kinds I'm of writing it down. Yeah. Yeah. Acronyms now. Ackerman. Acronyms are flying. Caleb K from Wisconsin. Yeah, I'm up <laughs> long ago. Exactly right. And again, not, not a lot of bites today, but caught some quality. When we got to about mid morning, about two hours into our broadcast, a couple really nice fish. And fair to say, if it was a shallow water only event, if you lived up shallow, this man right here from Wisconsin dominated. And you say he may be the only guy up on the bank tomorrow. Oh, I think the only one that's committed to all day long. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Exclusively. Exclusively. Yeah. Not Ooh. going to leave. Yes. Good day. Yeah, that is a big splash. Good season now as it stands right now. The only guy throwing a buzz bait on top water. Yes. We've seen we've seen frogs and whatnot, but we haven't seen a buzz bait. Right. He's the only yeah. one. Yep. And catching them in the middle of the day. He's got a Canterbury with unofficially around 19. You know, pounds. I mean, it's uh, it's a good day for sure. Should have been better. I, I didn't capitalize on every bite, but uh, you know, hopefully I'll still be in the hunt and make it till tomorrow. It's been a good day. I didn't. I didn't cull many times. I only culled like two or three, three fish. So uh, it ain't like I just murdered them out there. So hopefully I'll get to fish tomorrow, and we're gonna see where, see if we can't catch them, catch them one more day. If we can fish tomorrow, we're gonna try and catch them one more day. You got to catch them all four days here at Ufaula. I do know that. So I've done it three times. So let's go try it again tomorrow. Hopefully. Fair to say tomorrow will be the most challenging day of the four. Let's go in. Good showing from your 2019 Angler of the Year champion, Scott Canterbury. He would love a win. He's done all these heroics over the past 16 months without a win. Sort of fill out the prize package for sure. Few last minute casts from Kyle Welcher here. 
on his way in, kind of breaking up on us a bit there. Kyle Welcher, we had big expectations today for Kyle, and he, he uh, kind of ran into a much slower day than any of us expected. Yeah, I, I, exactly right. I think one of the biggest surprises today was Clark Wendelin, and really almost eerily similar to yesterday. Even though yesterday he caught so many two and a half pound fish, is if we saw two critical bites from Clark yesterday in the last hour. We might have seen that in the last 30 minutes with him today. Well, it's been several hours since Clark was officially in the top 10, and with those last two culls, he's, at least unofficially, gained access into tomorrow's fishing. So we'll see how it works out. Nothing's guaranteed, nothing's official. You get them, boy. I got like 19 or so. I didn't catch many, I just caught a couple of big ones. I, I didn't call but like three times. I lost a freaking begging too, a real begging. No, out deep. John Cox over Scott Canterbury's right hand shoulder. All right. Day is done. <laughs> We are That's ready right. to wrap this thing We're up here. Exactly right. Looking it's, forward to tomorrow. It, it, you just when it's that close, you know you're in for some a nail biter all day long. Yeah, and one of the great things that you can't stress this enough. No, one of the the best things that we experienced this week so far is a lot of people. In fact, a lot of the locals that fish Lake Eufaula thought. That's going to be a grinder. I mean, it's going to be a true catch, maybe 17 to 18 pounds, and you're going to have a shot at winning. That has absolutely not been the case. No. This lake has shown out in a big way this week. It's been super entertaining to watch. A really different thing. A great wide range of opportunities and applications to use to put those fish in your boat. It's just, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and I think the a, a real cool factor going into tomorrow is basically nine guys that are that are concentrating offshore and we've got one angler one angler that has solely committed to fishing shallow uh to see if that rookie has a shot at this title that's cool well yeah 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 pressure's going to be on him i say we don't take our eyes off of him because you know stranger things have happened nine guys doing one thing and one guy finds something else that's different and winds up on top of the leader and there's still still there was some two scary scary fishermen near that 10, 10 spot you know that's what you're trying to get to 10 or better to fish tomorrow you see guys like Chris Zaldane or a Keith Combs that are masters of deep water fishing if they get in here's what I can tell you is going off of the 2019 season if you get in that top top 10 you've got a shot just because we had so many people come from behind two times last two, year correct two times 10th place guy came back to win all right. If you, if you look to last year's season for any sort of guidance as who's going to excel, we look at the middle of that top 10 leaderboard, at least unofficially right now, at Jamie Hartman, Drew Cook, and Brandon Cobb. Five, six, and seven. Yes. Pretty dangerous characters yeah. right there. Guys that are used to holding trophies. Oh, yeah. Too. They, they, have, they know the feel. And, uh, man, oh, man, I just think we have all kinds of different scenarios possible, hundreds of them, really, when you think of it. There he is, Scott Canterbury, got the job done. Continuing his great work that he put on for us all year, last year. We were hoping for a few more of those frog bites today. Oh my God! We came back only. from, our, from our, our midday break, and you said, "Gosh, we need like three or four more of those." Top that would water sustain bites. us. That would just <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe it'll happen tomorrow. Maybe maybe tomorrow is frog day. I think we're in for an amazing championship Saturday. No doubt about it. You don't want to miss it again. Coverage here on ESPN. The critical final three hours of the tournament starts at noon. Tommy you can, Sanders, who you got tomorrow? On the app. Who have I got tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know. One of those five, six, and seven. I'm going to call it right Ooh, now. Hartman, really? Hartman. Wow. Cobb. Drew Cook. I'll go with Brandon Lester. I know. Call me crazy. Zoo? Give me some Scott Canterbury. <laughs> All right. There we go. Matt going to pull it out. Give me We will see you tomorrow on Bassmaster Live.